bringing hope to many around the globe, transforming lives into legacies. Live in Word with Pastor Mensa Otobiel. And now, today's word. So I'm going to continue my series on life in the spirit. Life in the spirit. And this is a very important teaching. We've covered a lot of ground. We've talked about uh, the spirit and the soul. We've talked about the fact that man is a spirit being. And we've looked at various aspects of who the spirit is and who the soul is. We've looked at the body. And, and now we're going to go a little further to try and identify the spirit a little better. Uh, the spirit man a little better. So my subtitle for part three is the spirit man. The spirit man and the life uh, in the spirit. I know uh, people sometimes in this... Uh, uh, gender sensitive era. When you say spirit man, uh, some ladies are going to say, "What about spirit woman?" Well, I, you know, I don't really care whether it's spirit woman or spirit man, but we have to use one. Uh, and so we say spirit man, and and it includes everybody, male and female. Uh, it's spirit woman too, uh, but it's spirit man. So let's just be comfortable with the terminology and just work with it. The spirit man. Who is the spirit man? When we say that there is a spirit in man, who is that spirit? Is it just air? Is it just uh, an essence? Is it just a feeling? Is it a mindset? Uh, is it a mentality? What, what is it when we talk about the spirit? And so we're going to look at two major experiences in the New Testament. And then I would, I would on the back of that, give some explanation to give us uh, some light on who the spirit man is. So we start first with 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 2 and 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 2 and to 4, 2 to 4. And this is the apostle Paul writing to the church in Corinth. And I want us to pay attention to the statement he makes here. He says, I know a man in Christ who 14 years ago, whether in the body I do not know, or whether out of the body I do not know, God knows such a one was caught up to the third heaven. And I know such a man, whether in the body or out of the body, I do not know, God knows how he was caught up into paradise and had inexplicable words, which it is not lawful for a man to utter. So Paul is talking about something uh, he calls an experience. And in talking about that experience, he talks about a man. He says, I know a man. And please take note of the word he's using. I know a man. I know a man. Now, generally, uh, Bible theologians and scholars all agree that Paul is talking about himself. But he's speaking in the third person. And because he's speaking the third person, you may get the impression that he's talking about somebody else. But he's actually talking about himself. I know a man. Take note. I know a man. And then... Uh, if you look at the tense uh, he speaks in, it is a perfect tense, a perfect tense. I know a man. Basically, it is like saying, I, I knew a man and still know the man. So it's, it's a perfect tense. I know a man. It's not past. It's not future. It is something that has happened and continues to happen. And so this experience with this person is a real experience. And he says that he had this experience 14 years prior to when he's writing 2 Corinthians. And uh, if you place it well, uh, depend on how the dating goes, it will be somewhere around the beginning of Paul's mission at the first missionary journey or just after that. Uh, that's when he, he's in the church in Antioch around Acts 13 or just after that, somewhere around Acts 15, when he goes to the Council of Jerusalem. So 
that's the, the time when this experience is taking place. I know a man. Then he describes the man and he says the man is in Christ. The man is in Christ. So this man he's talking about is a man who is in Christ. That means that he's spiritually connected to Christ. Of course, our bodies are not in Christ. It's our spirits that are in Christ. So this is a spiritual experience. This man in Christ is talking about a spiritual experience because at the time Paul is speaking, Jesus has already died. He has resurrected. He has ascended to the Father. There is no way for Paul to have a physical experience of Jesus Christ. It is a spiritual experience. So this man in Christ instantly tells you that this man is a spirit person, a man in Christ. Then uh, he says something else about the man in Christ. And it's a very interesting one. He says the man was caught up, caught up. This man in Christ is caught up. And, uh, and it's a very interesting phrase. Uh, it means he was transported from the physical realm to the spiritual realm. It's a phrase that, a phrase that is used in Acts chapter 8. Uh, verse 39, to describe Philip's experience of being instantly transported from one place to the other. So it's a transportation, a uh, spiritual transportation statement, caught up. It is also used in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 17, talking about what Christians generally de describe as the rapture, to be caught up. So this is to be transported transported. So he says that this man in Christ, spiritual being, is transported. He's caught up. So who is this man in Christ? We know he's a spirit and we'll, we'll identify him a little further. He says the man is transported. The word transport comes from two words, trans and port. What is trans? Trans means to go across something, to go across. And port means gate or door. So, so to be transported is to go through a gate or through a door or to be moved from one place to the other, as we normally understand it when we say we're taking transport, we've moved from one place to the other. But in a real sense, it means to move through gates, to move through dimensions or through gates. So this man is caught up. He's transported. And the third thing Paul says about this man that is transported is that he's transported to the third heavens. Third heavens. Third heavens. So this is the only time that this phrase is used in, in, uh, in the New Testament, third heavens, uh, which Paul later also describes as paradise. Now, Normally, the phrase third heavens is uh, used to describe the heavens of God's abode. The heavens of God's abode. So this man, in Christ's spirit, transported to God's abode. That's the experience he's talking about. Now, Many times when we talk about God's abode and heaven, uh, we are thinking about a geographical distance um, that you, you move uh, somewhere out there. Where I, you know, as a young Christian, there used to be a chorus we used to sing sometime, I think in the 70s, and it says somewhere in outer space, God has prepared a place for those who trust and obey him, somewhere in outer space. Heaven is not in outer space. It's not in outer space. It's a dimension. It's a moving through ports. It's a moving through doors. So uh, Paul says, I had this experience and I'm transported. I go through a door and I'm in a totally different dimension. And this dimension, he calls it the third heaven and he calls it uh, uh, paradise as well. You know, as a, as a young uh, boy, I think around th age uh, 12 or 13, uh, I understood heaven as a dimension and not a location because I read a, uh, a children's book written by uh, the great uh, Christian apologist C.S. Lewis. 
And C.S. Lewis uh, wrote the series of children's book called The Chronicles of Narnia about some kids who used to have an, an experience. And he's, he's teaching spiritual things to kids, but, and so he's using fantasy uh, to teach about uh, heaven and Christ as redeemer and so on. And, and, but what happens is these kids enter a wardrobe in their home and instantly they are in a timeless era where they have an experience. And when they come back, time has not gone. And, and so I, I read that I think around age 12 or 13, of course, when I grew up, I made sure that all my kids will read the Chronicles of Narnia to understand the spiritual world and how it works. It's not a third heaven in terms of going, you go through the solar system, go beyond uh, uh, Jupiter and go and go and go and then somewhere, whoo, you find heaven. No, heaven is around us. It's a dimension that is in existence that we can be transported in and out almost instantly. And that's the experience that Paul says he has. But the person having the experience is this man that Paul is talking about. And what is unique about this man? Uh, because Paul uses a phrase twice. And I have taught here uh, that when we read the scripture and we see a repetition of phrases or sentences, we have to pay attention because emphasis is being made. And Paul uses the phrase, whether in the body or out of the body, I do not know. And he repeats it, whether in the body or out of the body, I do not know. So this man has an experience. Paul says, I can't really tell whether it's a, an experience in the body or out of the body. Uh, only God knows. Now, why does he say that? He's saying that the experience he had, this man had, is so real that it looks like a physical experience. It looks like something that has happened to him physically, like somebody pinching you because he can't tell whether uh, it's just my spirit having it. Is my body also having it? Did my body go to, to the third heaven? It's so real to him. And that's what this experience is. It's not just like your body left your, your, your something left you and went to have an experience and, and, and then you came to enter your body back. He says, it's so real that it looked like my whole being, my whole person had that experience. But if you analyze the statement, this man therefore is his spirit having the exper experience, not his body. His body cannot be in the third heavens. His body was not transported and his body is not in Christ. The one who is in Christ is his spirit. If anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. The person who is in Christ, it's not your body. It's not your body in Christ. It's your spirit, which is in Christ. So note Paul's experience. Because Paul is not the only one who has this experience that helps us to understand who the Spirit is. John, the apostle, also has a similar experience. And John, the apostle, uh, documents his experience in the book of Revelation. Revelation chapter 1, verses 9 to 11. This is just at the beginning of the book of Revelation. And this is what John says. I, John, both your brother and companion in the tribulation and kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ was on the island that is called Patmos for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. I was in the spirit on the Lord's day and I heard behind me a loud voice as of a trumpet saying, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last. And what you see write in a book and send it to the seven churches which are in Asia, to Ephesus, Smyrna, Pergamos, Theatira, Sardis, Philadelphia, and Laodicea. The person speaking is John. John says, I'm the one writing this. I'm the one talking about this experience. Just like Paul talk, talks about, I know a man. This is John. And what is John saying? John says, I'm on the island of Patmos. On the island. 
So if you ask people, where is John? They'll say he's on the island. Why? Because we can physically see him on the island. His body is on the island. The guards know he's on the island because he's been exiled there as a prisoner. And there are prison guards who know that John is in Patmos. He's on the island. If the supervisor asks, where is John? They say he's in our island. How do we know? We see him. John is on the island. So Paul, John says, I was on the island of Patmos. He's been exiled. He's a prisoner. There are other prisoners with him on the island of Patmos. So we can say that physically, John is on the island. His body is there as proof that he's there. It's like you are in church today. Your body is here to prove that you are here. I am here, but my body is not here. My body is somewhere else, but I recorded this teaching ahead of time. So I'm not physically present in the church. However, John is physically present in, on the island of Patmos. He's present there. Then he uses, introduces another phrase. He says, I was in the spirit. So which part is in the spirit? His spirit. Because if you look at your Bible, the spirit there. Uh, is spelled with a capital S. And that talks about the Holy Spirit. So he says, I was in the Holy Spirit. I was in the Holy Spirit. His body definitely is not the one in the Holy Spirit. The one who is in the Holy Spirit is his spirit. And he says, so John has a, an experience similar to what Paul has. Paul says he was caught away, but John doesn't say that. He says, I was on the island. I was uh, in prison on the island. I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. And then he said, I heard a trumpet, the sound of a trumpet behind me. Now, if, so if you listen to what John is saying, he says, I have this experience. It's as if I'm just in the, in the, in the island I'm there as a person, I'm alive, my, my faculties are working, and I hear a sound behind me, it sounds like a trumpet, and when I tend to see the sound, all of a sudden I'm hearing a voice saying, I am the Alpha and the Omega. He's right there having a spiritual experience, right there, his body is there. And if there are pr prisoners, they are watching him. They don't even know what is happening to him. He looks like a normal human being sitting down. But at the same time, his spirit is having an experience that his body is not having on the island. So, John, body on the island, his spirit is in the Holy Spirit. Both of them have an experience. And both of them have an experience involving their spirit. Thank you for listening to Living Word. To interact with Pastor Mensah Otebil, like his page on Facebook. Follow him on Twitter at Mensah Otebil. Email Otterville at centralgospel.com or call plus 233-302-688-000.